All right, thanks for tuning in with me again. So today I want to explore deploying large language models, specifically open source large language models. Where this has come from is my last few videos have received some positive feedback and also requests for people wanting to understand how to use frameworks like Autogen with open source large language models. The second point of interest here is looking back at the drama we've seen with OpenAI over the last couple of weeks, it really highlighted some of the vulnerabilities in just relying solely on proprietary large language models to build your applications. As always, there's going to be a technical tutorial, or sorry, a technical blog that accompanies this video, and that will be linked in the description once the blog is published. So there are some prerequisites to following along with me here. You'll need a Hugging Face account set up. We're gonna be deploying Llama 2 70 billion, so you'll need access to that model. You can get that by requesting access via Hugging Face. You will need a Rumpod account and also $25 of credits that you can apply to your Rumpod account. I think that's the minimum amount of credit they allow. You will also need access to Postman and you can do that by setting up a free account on Postman. As always, all of the necessary resources to follow along will be linked in the description to this video. All right, let's get into it. Following this deployment strategy just has five steps. So the first step is to determine the compute resource. Now, we're obviously dealing with really large models here, and we need to know exactly the amount of compute resource we need to make these models work for inference successfully. The second step is to create your RunPod template. So we can do that on the RunPod platform, and RunPod template is essentially just built off a Docker image that RunPod then builds a container for, and that's how we'll be running the models. The third step is to deploy the container. And while deploying that, we can monitor the build logs to ensure that everything is running behind the scenes as it should. And the fourth step will be to test the endpoint on Postman. And that gives us an idea of whether we've set everything up correctly. And we can also monitor the logs and see how we need to interact with that endpoint. And the fifth step will be to drop the endpoint into one of our applications. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, I will be demonstrating this with Autogen. However, you can also use this with any application that uses an open AI endpoint. You might need to just change a few syntax things, but it should be transferable to those applications as well. All right, hopefully the steps are clear and we can begin with the technical stuff. All right, so let's start by determining how much compute resource we need to run our Llama 70B model. The first thing you want to do is navigate to this hugging face space, which is can you run it LLM version? This tells you for each model that you supply to it, it will tell you how much computational resource you'll need in terms of VRAM. And it tells you that for inference, fine tuning, or whatever process that you'd like to perform with your large language model. There is a side panel over here that allows you to select the model. So you're not just limited to Llama 70 billion. You can use any of the models that are available to you on Hugging Face. I've prepared this ahead of time because I didn't want to reveal my Hugging Face token. So I've already put in Llama to 70 billion chat Hugging Face. So let's scroll down and have a look at the compute requirements here. So I believe Llama 2 is published in 16-bit precision. So if we have a look at the total for inference, we know we need around 154 gigabytes of memory, so of VRAM to run Llama 2. Great, so we've established that we need around 154 gigabytes of VRAM just for inference. So the next thing we wanna do is head over to RunPod. And then in RunPod, you wanna to head to the secure cloud page. This gives you a menu of all the GPUs available for you to hire. The GPU I've gone with is the L40, and that's just to balance out availability versus cost. Now, at 154 gigabytes of VRAM and the L40 providing 48 gigabytes, we know we need around four GPUs. So take that down as a note. We need four instances of the L40 because we are going to create our template in the next step, and we need that information to do that. Before moving on to the next step, I'd like to talk about some of the complexities around multi-GPU inference, specifically when we're using the VLLM framework. So it's essential to recognize that the deployment of multi-GPUs must be aligned with your model's architecture. VLLM takes an approach of multi-GPU inference where it uses tensor parallelism to support this inference across our multiple GPUs. So we've already established that we need four GPUs for the memory requirements for Llama 70B but there is an additional detail that we should take into account. And this is the tensor parallel size. 
how does the tensor parallel size relate to the number of GPUs and the architecture of our model? Firstly, the number of attention heads in our large language model must be divisible by the tensor parallel size. And this is something that we're going to set when we create our RUMPOD template. The other thing to take note of is the tensor parallel size should be equal to the number of GPUs that we instantiate. To give you an example here, Llama 70B has 68 attention heads. We are using four GPUs. 68 is divisible by four, so we have 17 attention heads being processed across four GPUs. So that's 17 attention heads on each GPU. If we were to increase that number of GPUs to five, 68 is no longer divisible by five. This will cause the inference process to break. One warning that I'll give is that Falcon 7B has 71 attention heads. Obviously, this is a prime number, so it can only ever be processed on either 71 GPUs or one. Fortunately, it's a small model and there is a large enough GPU to process the entirety of the model on RUMPOD. So just be aware that if you are using a different model to Llama 70B, you will have to, first of all, work out the compute requirements for running inference on that model. Then you'll have to work out the model architecture and understand how many attention heads you're dealing with. And that should give you the number of GPUs that you need to instantiate, as well as the tensor parallel size setting that you will need to set when you're creating your template. Hopefully that's clear. Great. So now that we understand multi-GPU inference and tensor parallelism, let's move on to creating our custom template on RUMPOD. So the first thing you want to do is to navigate to custom templates. Now, when you're creating your template for the first time, you will be using the new template option up here, but I've already created one ahead of time. So I'm just going to enter that template and give you an idea of what it looks like. When you create your template, you'll be presented with this skeleton to fill out. So at the top of the skeleton is quite self-explanatory. All you want to do is give your template a name. Obviously give it something that's going to be memorable to you that you can retrieve later on. The next step is quite important. So this is the container image. So templates on RomPod are built off Docker images as a base. Those Docker images are compiled on the RomPod GPUs that you select and those Docker images form containers, which will run our inference server. So the container image I'm using is from VLLM and it's the official VLLM Docker image for the OpenAI inference server that they have built. I will provide a link to this container image in the description to this video, but it will also be provided for you in the technical blog, which will be supplied in the description to this video as well. The next step is to place our Docker commands. So some of these are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll briefly go over what we're doing here. So the first thing is to set the host, and it's important to set the host in this way so that the inference server is accessible to you. Remember, we're running this on a remote server. This is being run on a RomPod instance or RomPod instance of GPUs. So you need to set the host as 000 and not local so that it's accessible to you. The next step is to set your model. If you're following along with me and using Llama 70B, then you won't need to change this. However, if you are using a different model, you will need to change this to the hugging face path of the model that you would like to use. Also know that VLLM does support only a subset of models on Hugging Face. So you'll have to look at the supported models to ensure that the model you want to use is indeed supported by the VLLM framework. The next step is to set the tensor parallel size. And we discussed that in detail in the last section of this video. So hopefully that should make sense as to why that is being set to four here. Obviously, if you're using a different model with a different architecture, or a different type of GPU, then this setting might have to change. Next steps are to set the container disk and the volume disk. Really, all we want to do here is be able to load the model for inference. So you should set enough memory here such that that's the case for whatever, mem for, for whatever model that you'll be using. Setting the volume mount is just aligned with the recommendations from VLLM's Docker deployment documentation. Set it exactly as you see in this video. I will provide the link to the documentation so that you can keep aware of that just in case things do change in the background. 
the other thing you want to set is the port to expose. So in this case, we'll be exposing port 8000. Lastly, you want to set your environment variables. So there's only one environment variable that I've set in this template, and that is my Hugging Face API key. And that's because I'm using Llama 270B, which is a gated model. If you're not using a gated model, then you won't have to set this environment variable. Setting the environment variable is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is expand the menu and you'll be presented with the option to enter a key and a value in the key should be in the environment variable for the Hugging Face access token. And in the value should be the API key from Hugging Face. Once you're done setting up your custom template, all you need to do is hit save template. And that's it for setting up the template. We'll move on to the next step, which will be deploying our template in which RunPod will help us build that template to create a container running across our four GPU instances. Now let's move on to deploying our template. So what you want to do is navigate to the secure cloud. And then you will want to navigate to the L40 GPU if you're following along with deploying Llama 70B. As earlier stated, we want to select four instances of that, and then we want to hit deploy. And then you want to go here and select your custom template that you've created. Mine is already pre-selected because I had previously created that. Next thing you want to do is hit continue and then deploy. So deploying these containers, um, because we're deploying quite large models, it does take some time. So this will run for another 10 minutes. I'll speed up the video and get back to you once the container has fully run to discuss what's happening behind the scenes by looking at some of the logs. Great. So if we navigate into the logs, we have two things here. So we have the system log and it looks like our container has built with no issues and you can track the history here for yourself. It's really important when you're deploying these containers to have a look at the system logs because it will start to give you some clues of if something has gone wrong in the deployment process and that will help you debug. Um, let's have a look at the container logs as well so we can see how the different parts of the model have been loaded onto our GPUs. And we can also see that it seems to be running the server with no issues. So that's the inference server there. Brilliant. The next step we want to take is to actually try to connect to this, um, to connect to our server. So what we do here is we hit connect. And if you see this, connect to HTTP service, then that means everything is up and running. What you might also see is that the service is not ready yet. And in that case, just wait a few minutes for the service to become ready and then you're ready to connect. And all you want to do here is press connect and this will bring up a web browser. Great, so if you see detail not found, don't worry. This is okay. As long as there were no errors in the log that were immediately obvious to you, this should be fine. And what we want to grab here is we want to grab this URL. And I will explain what we'll be doing with this URL in the next part of the video when we're going to test our endpoint with Postman. Right, so now that we have deployed our container, let's test our endpoint in Postman. So as I said, you should have this browser open once you've connected to your service. And what you wanna do is you want to grab the URL from the top of the browser. So just copy and paste that. Just apologies, just copy that. The next thing you want to do is open up Postman. So Postman is a free service in which we can test our endpoint. Once you have Postman open, what you want to do is on the left-hand side here, you want to make sure that it's set to post. I think by default, it's usually set to get, but make sure you change that to post. Then paste your endpoint in here. And then you want to write the following. So V1, 
and then completions. And that's how we get our endpoint to mimic the OpenAI endpoints. Next, you want to navigate to body and paste this dictionary in the body. So I will be providing that in the technical blog as well. So you'll be able to just paste that straight in if you're following along. Now, obviously, if you're using a different model here, you want to call the full hugging face path of that model. And that is it for testing our endpoint. Now we can just send it. And we're sending the request there. Now we're making an inference on the server asking, who are you to the Llama 270B chat hugging face model. And what we can see here is we get a response, which means the endpoint is working correctly. And just to show you what that looks like in the logs, just to make you comfortable with that, if we step back into our pod and then we go to the logs and you go to the container, you can see where we've made the inference request. So yeah, so we've received the completion request, the model is Llama, Llama 270B. And you can see the prompt, who are you? And then you can see all of the parameters for the model there. So that has been successful. And you can see the success code there of 200, which is great. So that's it for testing the endpoint. We know the endpoint works and we know we've deployed our model successfully. The next step we will take is to move on to actually dropping this endpoint into Autogen as a replacement for the OpenAI endpoint that we would standardly use with that library. Okay, so let's move on to our final step. And this is the one that many of you would have been waiting for. We've got our endpoint, we've tested it in Postman and we've seen that it works, but how do we integrate this into Autogen? It turns out it's really simple to do this. So I will be providing this entire notebook for you in a GitHub repository so you can reference the code for yourself. All you want to do to use that endpoint within Autogen is to set up your config list like I've shown on screen. But where it says API base, we want to paste our endpoint. And then lastly, don't forget this detail. You want to add V1 in here to mimic the open AI server. And then let's hit run. So that has worked well. And you can see we got a response from the Llama model. So I am Llama, an AI assistant developed by Meta AI. And you will see that that pretty much mimics the response that we get when we tested this on Postman. So if I put this here, that's our response. So you can see we have the same response. I am an AI assistant developed by Meta AI. So that just shows how this works. When you're finished with your project, it's important to remember that you are using a paid service. So make sure you step back into RomPod, step back into your pods, and you can shut the service down by hitting stop. So you can either stop it or per permanently delete the service. Remember, if you stop it, you're still paying for storage. So if you don't want to continue using RomPod credits, stop the service and permanently delete the, the uh, pod. Don't worry, your template will still be saved. So you can rebuild this container at any time. So that's it for our quick tutorial. We've successfully deployed a large language model, Llama 270B, using VLLM and RamPod and Postman to test our endpoints. Hopefully that was quite simple for you to follow, and hopefully you'll be able to repeat the steps yourself in your own time. If you like this content and you found this informative, please like, subscribe to the channel for more data science, artificial intelligence, and large language model-based content. I'll be sharing more videos in the upcoming weeks around using the open source models with Autogen. So please stay tuned for that, showing you how different types of models like Code Llama work with some of the projects that I've previously shared. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.